right now. Silver Lake, February 27th. Silver's going to come in thousand dollars a month. Area 58 is reporting us. Thank you very much. Um, excuse me, Hall. It's very sure. hard to hear down here. I don't know if it's the it's the floor, I guess. Okay, turn it down or Mr. Wallace is on it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, to begin with, I would like to welcome our new member, um, Chris. Thank you so much for stepping in and taking uh, Jim uh, to the spot for the remainder of his term. Um, would you? I came in late. Did you have a chance to meet everybody? Would you like us to just go around the? I believe community? I didn't know almost everyone in the room. Yeah, I met before. Yeah. Okay, I just want to be sure. All righty. Thank you. Welcome. Um, you picked a great meeting to start. I give yeah. you so much credit. All right, we'll get into it. <laughs> Your background suits well, though, so thank Perfect. you so much. Um, I will open it up to the public if anybody has any. Um, Anything I'd like to say before we get started? <coughs> I will tell you, once we begin the discussion, um, anybody who wants to make a comment, ask a question, what have you, I'm, I'm going to ask that you raise your hand and be recognized by the chair. I really want the, the committee and the, the administration to have you know, a, a robust discussion, and I would prefer not to have interruptions, though I'm very happy to have anybody speak uh, if they feel they would like to. So seeing none at this point, OK. Um, let's take a look at the minutes from our last meeting. Motion to accept the minutes from our Thursday, February 8th meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, opposed? Abstained? Abstained. Abstained. Chris, are you? Do you need a motion on the executive you session? It takes well on the ground, but okay. okay. I'm sorry, Jason. You want me to move on the executive session as well? Please, thank you. Make a motion to uh, accept and hold the executive session minutes from our Thursday, February 8th meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. So moving on to the, the purpose of tonight's meeting. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody involved in uh, the preparation of the materials you shared with us ahead of time. I, I know it took a lot of thought, a lot of work. Um, it, it's obviously not um, a pleasant exercise, but the presentation of it was outstanding, um, given some historical numbers and, and uh, more current numbers. And the reasoning next to the items was very clear. Um, so I want to thank everybody for really think, positioning the committee to uh, jump into the discussion with, with some, you know, some substantial thoughts from you folks ahead of time. So I do appreciate that very much. Um, well, I'll, I'll just begin. Um, again, in order to go back and to try to look at minimum cuts, um, it, is a, it is a difficult and painful process. Um, over the years, we have made many cuts. Um, and as a former Deer School Committee member used to say, there are only so many paper, cut, paper clips that can be cut. And we have, indeed, cut all of our paper clips. So there's really not a lot that we can look at at this point. Um, so this really took a tremendous amount of creativity and time. And I really want to reach out and just especially thank um, Christine Healy, the business manager, Michaela Gill, um, high school principal, Jim Dupeel, middle school principal, Steve Pello, um, our tech director, Cara Dieglo, our, bis our um, facilities manager, Jill True, and um, our assistant superintendent, and Marie Graber, our special ed director. Um, we did spend a lot of quality time together, um, and I have to say, um, as a team, everybody really was willing to uh, roll up their sleeves and work together to get this done. Um, we looked at all areas of our budget. Nothing was sacrosanct. Um, everything was looked at. Uh, supplies, technology, maintenance, transportation, textbooks, programs, and staff. Um, one of the things that we did look at again is late buses. Again, there is only so many areas we can look at. Um, this is not an area that any of us are comfortable with, but there are only so many areas that there's even a possibility of making cuts at this point um, other than staff. Um, we currently have five late buses um, that run after school. Um, they go three days a week. Um, it's, uh, it supplies transportation for after school support and enrichment programs. Uh, about 100 students a day ride the late buses um, or five buses. 
Our problem is the geographic range and size of our district. Um, in Plimpton, in general, there may only be 10 students on a bus that can hold 60 to 70, um, but because Plimpton is spread out and large, um, those students can still be riding the bus for an hour to an hour and a half um, to get home. So we're trying to figure out, is there any way we could combine buses but again, when you're already keeping kids on a bus after school for an extra hour and a half to get home from a late bus, um, it is difficult. One area we thought of as a possibility is to decrease after school transportation two days a week or to, again, attempt to combine and drop a bus and only run four buses and maybe do something where Clifton students closer to the Kingston line could ride with Kingston, those closer to Halifax line could ride with Halifax. But again, it's sort of a time issue. Um, other areas that we have looked at um, is we reviewed all staff of savings and insurance. Um, when we built version one of the budget, we expected it to be a 10% increase in the Mayflower Municipal. These were the numbers that we had received. Um, at the last school committee meeting, uh, you may remember Charlie Seelig let us know that he was looking at more 8% um, that they had a meeting. Um, he then went back and sent us the actual rates of increases per plan, and we actually charted out all of our staff, the current plans that they're in, based on their increases, and we found not only the savings we had mentioned last time, some additional savings, because like the rate saver program was only a 4 point six. 4%. So we actually literally put all the staff into the things, and we believe we can save that 111,000, um, which is a, a huge savings when we're trying to come up with some of the cuts. Um, we also did a lot of review of our actual personnel um, and all positions of funding sources. Um, we set clear limits on the steps and lanes of hires, um, as well as reviewing our Title I and Special Education grant opportunities. By doing this, again, we were able to recognize some additional personnel savings. Um, I mentioned last month we did have a retirement. Um, we looked a little bit closer at the position and we believe we could take 25,000 off, not just 20, um, to replace that position. Um, all of the recommended uh, staff are still residing in this budget. Okay, so we did not recommend any cuts of current staff. Um, what we did was um, we looked at the positions that we recommended as replacements as a starting place. Then we don't have to deal with unemployment or cutting any current staff positions. Um, again, this is our first attempts at cuts. We realize you may send us back and say, no, you have to look at other things or look at current staff. But that's what we attempted to do. Our goal was to continue to provide the best fiscally responsible educational system possible um, and to remain competitive in charter and private schools. Um, as I've spoken about, and for those of you who have some of the graphs that we've put together, um, we are still losing children to charter schools. As we cut programs and as we cut opportunities for our students, I believe more students will then go to charter schools, which will cause a greater decrease in our Chapter 70 funds and more loss of money. Um, the last page of the packet includes some additional thoughts regarding potential budget savings. Um, we have just received a retirement at our office. It's a shared cost position. It is a .6 bookkeeper. Um, we have looked at that, and that is a position that we believe we could potentially cut um, from the budget. Uh, the position is listed as a potential cut with a savings of $28,000. Silver Lake pays $14,000 of that position. Okay, so it'll be a savings of fourteen thousand for Silver Lake, and then the other balance of fourteen thousand will be split between Halifax, Kingston, and Clinton. Um, we have a new uh, accounting software, um, and we recognize that with that, we believe we can provide the same services, do the same work, because we're saving some time. Um, what was your percentage efficiencies of? Some deficiencies have been created through the use of the new system. That's a much better that sense. Really much better. <laughs> <laughs> Manage through this. Yeah. So, um, you know, we believe that that is a position that we would not replace, that we would be okay with. Again, not, not anyone would lose a job, but it would be a retirement that we would not be replacing. Mm -hmm. um, that would cause us, though, just so we all understand, that is a shared cost position. So if the committee would like us to look further at that, we would call a shared cost meeting um, and we vote whether the other committees would agree with that. Um, some other ideas of potential savings um, and or revenue increases in the future. Um, we'll take some time to research and implement, but again, um, to be honest with you, we have really stretched 
trying to find ways to cut the budget or increase revenue. Um, so these were just some possible ideas. I'm not saying I recommend any of them. I'm just out of ideas, to be honest with you. Um, one thing that has been talked about um, previously is looking at a food service program. Um, do we want to look at the possibility of going to a program like Chartwells or some of the other um, programs that are out there? It is a, a program, it is something we have talked about before. Um, I don't know if the committee would be interested in us looking at that as an option. Um, currently, in terms of the budget, the food service director's salary is in the budget. We voted that last year, if you remember, to get it out of the red. Um, we also pay the insurance for all the employees. Um, that are our cafeteria workers come out of the Silver Lake budget. Um, currently, that runs a little over $150,000 that we spend for um, our food service program right now. I, I have talked only, you know, just because it comes up periodically with other colleagues. Um, there are districts that it costs nothing. Um, they, you know, Chartwells basically comes in, they run it, it's their employees, you know, the amount is charged, um, it's sort of a, um, a balanced program, I guess, you know, they, they charge and they, they have the amount of employees in the food service there. I know some districts that are very happy having gone that route, and I know some districts that are very unhappy about it, um, but that's only sort of circumspect. I have not really sat and sent out an email <coughs> and had it as a real discussion point with my colleagues, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, again, I'm, I honestly am not sure what else we can do. So it's just, it's a, it's a topic that's been in discussion. Um, the cafeteria has worked really hard to get us out of deficit. Um, you know, they really have, and I really want to recognize that. You know, if you remember, we had been in pretty severe deficit for years. Um, David has worked really hard to get us to be in the black. Um, we did successfully go in the black last year. Um, again, we did pick up the cost of salary, though. So, you know, again, um, it's just food for thought. Mm -hmm. Not not necessarily a recommendation, I'm just sort of throwing some ideas out there. And there'd be a cost for that service though, correct? Um, I, I don't believe there is, but I have not looked at a contract. As I said, if you would like me to take a little time and, and just even think about it, I don't, it would not be possible to do for next year. It would be a down the road thing. Um, and I would really want to make sure that we are making a good decision. So I'd like to have some time to look at it, if you would like me to do that. Um, I'm not sure it's a good idea. Um, you know, I think we, we do a, a pretty decent job with it. Um, and I know we have a cafeteria that's worked really hard at it. But again, it, you know, when I'm trying to find money, I'm just not sure where else to look at this point. So, so right now, so I didn't realize the insurance is also coming out of our budget, not out of the revolving fund. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're pretty much funding this, all the staff. I mean, the salary is still coming out for the workers, still coming out of the regular budget. Uh, yes, yeah, salary is coming out of the revolving fund, but insurance comes out of Silver Lake. I, I personally think that is something that should be investigated. I'm, I'm, in fa I'm in agreement with you. Having said that, if it's not something that could be implemented for the budget that we're discussing now, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I, I agree with you, though. I think it's something that's probably going to need to be explored. I, I'd be happy to do that, you know, maybe later in the spring, um, you know, we could look at it. As I said, it may turn out to be a terrible idea. Um, I honestly don't know. Um, but, I, you know, again, I know there are some districts that are very happy with it, really made a difference for them, and some that I've heard the kids aren't happy with the food. But I'm, I'm not sure that so they're happy the with the 150, them. just to clarify, was the entire out of our budget, including the director's position, which is how much? Over 60. Yeah, and then the, and the rest of it's medical benefits. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have any price control on the meals? Do we charge an extra quarter or something nominal that, that adds up on the number of meals per day? Um, we have um, looked at the cost of the meals yeah, and we did an like increase last year. Last year, I, last year? Yeah. I think it was last year we did an increase to try to offset. Yeah. Um, our problem is is the more you increase the cost, the less the parents and want to spend the money for, so they buy less food, so then sure. the cost continue to go up, but we don't sell as many lunches. Um, so we've, we're at a tipping point, Chris, to be honest with you. I think we're at a pretty good cost. We're, we're pretty much average around the areas that we charge. Um, I'm just trying to play yeah, no, 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 as they said, yeah. I, I, I'm with you. Yeah, 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 no, absolutely. I, I mean, tonight is about, as every budget discussion is, throwing something on the wall and seeing if it sticks, yeah. you know, just, yeah. 
that's what we're doing. Um, this last item is actually due to our new school committee member's idea. Um, so Chris Eklund, um, I was chatting with him, and one of the things he mentioned was the idea of looking at our student parking fees um, as a potential for funding some of our um, costs for parking lots. Um, we currently uh, charge $50 for parking for the year, um, and um, we, you know, that money is used to help us offset, like when we have to paint the new lines or you know update the the handicap stickers and some of those other things. Um, you know, Chris Chris mentioned you know maybe that would be a possible source of some additional revenue um, is to help offset some of the costs that we've dealt with. You know, the pumping out of the storm drains that we have and some of those other costs. Christine and I have um, had some initial conversations about it, and Christine um, texted her. Um, colleagues to find out what the fees were and she sent it out to 16 I received responses. 16 responses and the fees go from zero to two hundred dollars so it's kind of all over the place so that's of those 16 seven do not charge anything right Paul excuse me Maureen um, anything to do with parking fees or, or fees that associated with our students goes to the subcommittee for review. And just to let you know, Chris, in the past few years, we have increased greatly our activities fees for the kids. You have children, I'm sure you're aware of it. And um, and we did look at parking fees. And we're at the, I'm at the point right now, and I'm co-chair of that committee, that I think we're feeing our parents to death. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to avoid having to see that happen. We do have a solo project that um, Mr. Gittaboni has inspired us with, and we're hoping if that goes through, that may bring some revenue in for our parking area, which would help maintain the parking sure. facilities. So, so I would I would not be interested in seeing any fees raised to the families. Mark first. Oh, I, Mark I, first. I would say that. Oh, which one? You. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, the, we have a spot on every bus for every student that we're paying for transportation. Uh, and I realize the privilege of driving to school for, for uh, a senior is, is important and it's part of my kids did it. But as far as the privilege, it is something that is a privilege that uh, it can be revoked because of behavior and everything else. But I, I think that Chris has got a pretty good idea, especially if the range goes up to $200. The parking lot was not designed for parent drop-offs and it was not, it was designed for the buses. And we have a traffic issue in the morning at 7.30 as it is, and if a few kids got opted out and decided to ride the bus, that would only help the traffic situation, too. So I, I think it's something we should consider. Um, I'm sorry. I wanted to ask Christine, um, how many of those 16 were more than $50? So seven were zero, four were 50, uh, one was 100, three was 150, one was 200. Yeah. Can I ask Mark you first? Did you have a question? I do. I yeah. don't know. Mike, do you know how many spots we have That's on campus? Yeah. A thousand. A thousand. Are you just throwing that number out no, or is that I, a real we, number? When we did the layout, it was just a little under a thousand if you count the back parking lot. Those are student parking spots. No, it's the whole parking lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do we know how many student parking spots we have? We have about two hundred students who pay about fifty bucks. two-thirds of the class. Yeah, I, so you're talking like another... Well, again, you know, I just want to know the whole yeah, And to yeah. Marina's point, it would go, it would go yeah. to the, the safer committee. Um, you know, that's where we would look at something like this. Again, um, it was it was an idea. I thought it was a creative idea that Chris came up with. Um, I included it, you know, as, as part of this package. So, um, again, I, I think we've all looked at ways for revenue. I mean, we're not a business. We're really not into developing revenue. We're just trying to um, support the budget and maintain the budget. So. Well, I, my thought is that, you know, as, as it was mentioned, driving to school is a privilege. So, you know, even though there are a lot of fees, this is not a fee that is critical given that we have spots for kids on the buses. So yep. I, I would be in favor of increasing the fee. <laughs> so do we want to ask the SAFER committee to put that on their agenda to give some thought to? Please. Yes. Um, so, uh, having gone forward with that, um, the last item that I had mentioned um, sort of in my summary was, you may remember uh, Pembroke came in, uh, Aaron Obey, who is the superintendent of Pembroke. Um, Pembroke has um, set up that all students who apply to go to a vocational school 
um, have to apply to Silver Lake also. And if they get into our program, the superintendent would um, approve our program, not another program that they may also get into, South Shore Vocational Technical Program, for instance. Um, so we don't know yet what that's going to mean. This is the first year we're doing it. Um, what we have done in the past, and it has worked for us, is we assume our revenue will be about the same number of students graduating, about the same number will be coming in. That's how we've always built our revenue. We don't know how many students will apply. You know, we don't know how many students will get in. So that's sort of how we've always judged it. Sometimes we're a little low, sometimes we're a little high. More often than not, we're pretty darn close, okay? With this new system, potentially, we will have more students. Whether they stay with us past six or for a year is still up for grabs because we might not offer a program that they like. Like they may choose another program that we don't have available. Um, but it has the potential to be a cost increase for us. We kept our revenue the same this year. I think it's fiscally responsible. We're hesitant to um, promise revenue that we just don't know, okay? But in the future, in the future, after we get through this initial year and we have a sense of how this works, that could be possibly some additional money. We receive anywhere from nine to 10,000-ish a student. That's right, about 9,000. Um, each year, the state sets a number. So um, again, I honestly don't know if this will be an increase, but I did uh, just want to let you know that it has potential down the road for us. Um, so that's pretty much all the ideas and the thoughts that we had. Um, so just to go through uh, the cuts that we had listed, um, and again, this is, uh, I asked Steve to come so he can speak to any technology questions you have, and um, Michaela and uh, Jim obviously didn't have a choice. So, <laughs> so um, in terms of the principal's office, again, um, our cuts have really cut pretty deep at this point. There really is not a lot of money um, left to cut. You can see, um, you know, how we've been sort of playing around with the number um, over the years. You know, we, we were originally at 15, 16, 49,000. Um, you know, after the cuts, if we take those out, we're down to 43,000. And needless to say, things have not um, decreased in terms of the cost. Um, teaching supplies, um, that would be toner, paper, art supplies, technology, engineering supplies. Um, again, that would be a reduction of a little over 6,000. We split it between the middle school and the high school, so you can see. Um, again, there's not a whole lot of areas we can cut any longer. Um, think of John Creed's paper clips. And by the way, he did give me permission to use his quote, as you call him. He was, he was pleased I thought of him. Uh, professional development workshops, um, again, we take a thousand off. Um, part of our problem with making these cuts is we've also been cuts in grants, so we're just really sort of narrowing some of those things down. Um, the other area I'm a little nervous about in this is that we have NIAS coming up, and um, we will need to have some teachers attend some professional development for it, and there will be costs associated with that process. Um, in terms of textbooks, um, we've cut about 8,500. Um, it would be a reduction in some of the ELA texts that we had hoped to upgrade. Um, instructional hardware and software, printer supplies, software hardware, assistive technology, um, that's uh, about 20,400. Library, um, a reduction in some of our books. Team health, wellness, database, web subscription, ebooks, et cetera, and reduction in new titles. Um, about 3,700. AV, that's about 5,000. Um, reduction in replacement of audio equipment, microphones, slide advancers, new technology. Um, the middle school thought about a reduction in transportation for some of their music festivals. Um, that's a reduction of 500. Uh, middle school and high school. Um, again, this is what we talked about with late buses. Um, again, this is one that I realize is a sensitive subject and I am concerned about it, but there's just not too many areas left for us to look at. Um, maintenance of ground. Um, we are hopeful that with the new skid steer that we'll be able to complete some of the work currently contracted out um, for salting and sanding and we reduce that line item by 10,000. Um, we're hopeful that the new skid steer will be able to provide us with some savings, assuming the capital plan goes through. Mm -hmm. uh, maintenance of equipment, um, <coughs> some reduction in musical instrument repairs and science equipment repairs of 500. Um, acquisition of equipment, uh, which is wellness of fine art. 
Reduction in the purchases of IHT. I've totally drawn a blank by what that is. It's the devices for the wellness classes where they can monitor heart rates and Thank you. follow their fitness. Thank you. And cardio machines, AV and art equipment. Um, replacement of equipment. This is um, wellness equipment, um, <coughs> copiers, graphing calculators, band instruments. Um, that's, a, that's a decrease of about 16,000. Um, this front page um, of reductions <coughs> is $98,187. <coughs> Can I stop for a moment? Just ask, does the committee want to discuss this first page, Tier 1, cuts before moving on? Or do we want to have I'd like Joy to finish Tier ready? 1 at least, because this is Tier 1 on the back as well. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Oh, it's totally. Okay. Yeah, sorry. So on the back, um, you may remember I mentioned last month we had a staff retirement. Um, so we had taken 20000 out. We looked at the position. We believe we can reduce it by $25,000 um, for savings in terms of the new person coming in. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, Christine uh, um, and I spent a lot of time really looking at our staff, looking at some of the steps and lanes of hires. Um, making sure we had all of our funding opportunities through grants and Title <coughs> One um, correct. We believe we can cut the overall personnel by seventy thousand. What do you mean by that? So our personnel salary line item. Yeah. We looked at everybody that is there. We looked at where they're going potentially okay. with educational steps and lanes. We looked at new hires. Yep. We looked at people that are partially funded or are funded through grants, making sure all of our I's are dotted, T's are crossed. We believe we can come up with 70000 in additional savings. So applying the steps and lanes as they stand yes. now. Well, and anybody going forward. Right. Yep. Doing that math. Yes. Okay. All right. I, I understand what you're saying. Yep. When you state, I apologize. No, 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 no. I'm probably talking fast, sorry. No, I heard cut. Decreased staff. I, I no, no, no. We're, we worked. We worked really hard. Again, this is not cutting any current staff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no current staff cuts here. Yeah. Okay. Did I miss anything? No. This is a plan. Yeah. And then just some conversation on any new staff members where they may enter the schedule steps. Okay. So it's good. Oh, Mark. I'm sorry. So, um, obviously, personnel is your largest. But yes. line item, can you give us an idea on the previous ones? You gave us an idea what our budget amounts were as we were going through this, and what so we can sort of get an idea what kind of percentages you're sliding off of these other ones. What kind of number do you pay for uh, personnel? I mean, a reduction of seventy thousand. I'm trying to figure out what percentage did you reduce your personnel? Oh, I'm trying to understand what you're talking about. Oh. I would have to go back in the budget because their pay um, salaries are in so many different categories. Right. Between middle school and high school. I mean, it is your largest expense. Right. Well, Followed by your next one. I just going to say, look at the first one, but it says personnel all steps and lanes. Well, that's the increase. That's just the increase. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's huge. I mean, this is a very small, I, I don't even imagine it's 1%. Yeah, it's pretty modest. Okay. Okay. Our staff and that's, that's to my point. So the people don't look and say, "Where, where did you find seventy thousand yeah. dollars?" You found seventy thousand dollars by shaving off less. Thank you. That's a great point. Right. And and, I, and the same with you get to the insurance situation yes. coming up. I, I think people should know that. Yeah. It's not just if it's a big number doesn't mean it's right. not a small percentage. Yes. No. Oh, that's a very good point, Mark. Thank you. That's a good clarification. Um, and then our that's, oh, okay. no, I I just. Um, you know, before we move on to anything else, I would like us to just revisit sort of where are we trying to get to with all of these numbers. Like I know we talked about them at the last meeting, sort of where we need to be, but I feel like maybe we should revisit that before we start talking about. Okay. Do we do we want to just wrap up this one page? Uh, and then just at some point, I want to yeah. make sure that we do that. Yeah. Um, again, and then in terms of insurance reductions, um, we actually went through, looked at everybody's plan, looked at the actual percentage increase, went through, plotted based on the information Charlie Seelig was kind enough to share with us, and we have um, reductions that we believe are um, okay of 111,000. If we were, if the committee were to choose the entire front page and these three items on the back page, that savings for the budget would be three hundred four thousand one hundred eighty-seven dollars. Um, 
I just wanted to mention with the health insurance, we're having a meeting next week with the Maine Family Municipal Health Group on Wednesday to vote the final numbers. And this is based on what's been presented so far. Um, it looks like you've calculated out that 1% of the budget is equal to $255,000 approximately. Yes. So with the $206,000 that was um, saved from this staff retirement, the review of lanes and steps, and the insurance reductions. You've gotten pretty close to uh, a 0.8 of a percent just in those cuts right there, which okay. gets us down to about a 3.18. So I just wanted to bring this to the committee's mind because this is areas we don't have to deliberate on. It's pretty clear that we can accept these fines and appreciate that work. Um, just wanted to put that out there before we start making decisions and cutting things that we're going to have to argue about. Mm -hmm. yeah. And for anybody who doesn't know what Jason's referring to on the very back page, yeah. um, it has an impact draft budget cuts on assessments. So that's where we, we try to make it as simple and clear as possible so you can see the impact on the budget. Um, if you'd like, I can talk a little bit, and maybe the school committee members that attended could help me with our meetings with finance in terms of numbers. Um, if, if you'd like, we could go down that road, what they were looking for. Yeah, and I, I think when we walked out of here last time, our last meeting, we asked for administration to come up, up with around 400000 in cuts. This is, this is what we've been given so far to discuss. Um, I, I'll let you start. Sure. Uh, so we've attended, um, when I say we, um, a variety of school committee members and myself and uh, Christine and, and uh, Jill have met with all three finance committee, uh, all, finance, all three finance committees. Um, we met in Kingston a week ago. Okay, a week or so ago, and uh, two weeks ago, and. Uh, uh, we met with the Finance Committee, we reviewed our budget. Um, again, I believe Kingston Finance Committee has asked us to try to make cuts of 400000 Okay, uh, yes. And um, I think Laura was uh, there and Eric was there. I don't know if you'd like to add anything else. Um. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so that was that was Kingston. Um, we met with the um, Halifax Finance Committee. Um, Halifax Finance Committee didn't give us as, as an exact cost what they were hoping for. If I can paraphrase, and I apologize if I get it wrong, was that the increase of their assessment from last year to this year would be somewhere around one hundred fifty thousand. Oh, good, I got that one. Right, Okay, which will equal about the same cut as Kingston is looking for. It would be equal to approximately the four hundred thousand um, dollar mark was, was what both both the towns looked for. We met last evening. Uh, Jason and Maureen were both there with Plimpton, um, and Plimpton is just at the beginning stages of their budget. The timeline is always a little different than the other towns. Um, Steve was there. Um, they didn't really have numbers. Uh, to recommend to us because I think it's early in their budgeting process, uh, but I believe uh, Nate said that he appreciated any efforts we could make to reduce our budget. Um, again, Plimpton is on the receiving end of the greatest increase for Plimpton this year because they have almost a 1% increase in their assessment because I think you have 10 extra kids. So it's kind of a funny thing. So their I, assessment, I didn't know it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the assessment's a little higher for Clinton because they have a higher percentage of students. So Clinton um, didn't have an actual number, but I think would appreciate um, any cuts we can make. Does that help? Well, I'm still not clear on the sort of what's the number. Like when you said 400000 for Kingston, did you mean for the Silver Lake budget? Yes, for the so okay. overall yeah, budget. So yep. for the, that's not, okay. Yep, yep. Not just the, because at that meeting we talked about KES, KIS as well. I'm only okay. dealing with so like, thank you. Okay. I'm sorry, I should be clear. So, so you're saying 400 for Kingston and 150? Nope. No, it's 400 from the overall version one budget that okay. we shared. Yes. Okay. And, yeah. and that's for both Kingston and Halifax. Ma they just said it in a different way. Ma okay. Maureen first and then Jason. I'll defer to Mason. Okay. Right. So, I understand we have to balance the financial needs of the towns with the educational needs of, of our students. So, I know there's goals and there's aims dollar wise, but I think that 
we need to be mindful of the education goals of the district as well. And, and that's our primary role, and their primary role is coming up with the figures and numbers, and we're trying to collaborate to the best of our abilities to meet those needs of the towns, what they can sustain, what they can support, but also giving the best possible education here. So I just want us to be right. mindful that yeah. that's our role. Yeah. Agreed. I, agreed, if you don't mind. I completely agree, and I think that was very well said. Um, uh, we, we do need to be collaborative, though. I mean, we sat through the Halifax meeting last night, and it's math. You know, the money's not there. You can't overdraw a town when the money's just not there. The, the Halifax meeting last night with the Finance Committee and Selectman was very enlightening. Um, I'm not saying, you know, 400,000 even. I'm one committee member to begin with. I'm not saying 300,000, I'm not saying 500,000. I think we need to come up with a reasonable budget that we think our towns in, in will agree to and, and go from there and, and try and do as much as we can for the kids. Um, you know, it's like, please. So I think one of the things that we have to keep in mind is that you know, selectmen, boards of selectmen, you know, typically put together budgets for fire department and police department. We're doing schools. The one, I think, the biggest challenge that we have is we have competition. The town, the police department, fire department, they don't have competition. It's not like if we reduce police, they're going to go call another police department. No, that, that doesn't work that way. But when we reduce programs here, people leave here and go somewhere else, and it hurts us. It takes away from our budget. So we're in a very unique and, and difficult, challenging position, I think, in terms of schools, with charter schools um, being in, in the area. So um, I think, for me, personally, when we're looking at cuts, I want to keep that very much at the front of my mind and make sure that we're not hitting things that, you know, we want to, in my mind, at least affect the things that, that kids are involved in. And, and what are important to them and, and teaching because and to parents I mean you know we want to make this as transparent as possible um, and, and not affect people as much to chase them away you know one of the uh, selectmen last night in Halifax and I'm, I'm not going to go on and on about Halifax but somebody said something about cost effective and I had turned to joy and said well it, it's got to be educationally effective you know so having said that that's, well, that's what I thought about it. I just sort of interrupted you. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah. And I, you know, I just want to clarify the case. And my goal in asking that question is not to say, let's get to this finish line, but, right. but just to be mindful of, you know, where would the towns like us to be so that when we start to think about this, we can kind of keep that in mind because we do want to have sort of a balance. Um, not that we need to get to that exact place. So, you know, I'm. I'm I think we're on the same Yes, way. absolutely. Just, we work. We work with the finance committees. We do not work for the finance committees. Thank you. Yes. Okay. I have a question in the spreadsheet here. Um, the after proposed cuts column, that one million three seventy nine, is that supposed to be the total of those numbers there? Which page do you want? I'm on the first one. The first page. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a spreadsheet that the after proposed cut should total. Did you set it up and it didn't? Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to get back to I was to double it. checking myself up that, but I came yeah. up closer to a million. And I did the same thing on the column for the uh, 17, 18 budget, see what that number came from. I'm trying to see where we are year over year. That makes sense. Like oh, I'm sorry, I did not double check the no. spreadsheet. I haven't. I wasn't sure if they were invisible lines, uh, they were hidden in there or something. No, there are, I, as far as I know, there are no invisible lines. Okay. Um, but then the, what we're dealing with is the cut number, so that yeah. number, that 137, is it um, part of our cut calculation? So it's outside of that. So can I just ask, it, it, are the columns, Chris, did you do the math on the columns in the red? Did those? I didn't do the red ones, no. I was looking at the 1718 budget relative to the after proposed cuts numbers. Mm -hmm. Some of them are still increasing. You know, the, the second line, 2300 teaching, it went from 150, budget one was 166, but we're still going to 159, so it's an increase oh, it's of nine grand. 
You know, the next line is 25 grain, went to 31, we're cutting down 29, so it's still a $4,000 increase. Just less than our original version of the budget. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm trying to just compare yes. year over year what was the change. I think my numbers came around 7%. The professional development, remember, a lot of that has to do with the training for the, mm -hmm. the um, testing. Oh, sure. No, it's just, those are you know, small numbers, but you know, the, the hardware instructional will end up 25%, then we cut it back 20 grand, but that's still a uh, $4,000 increase. So for me, I'm new here, so forgive me. You know, oh, and I had an increase by, by more than 10%. Maybe I just need to be educated yeah. where it is. It, and, I, and I have to say that look, looking at this quickly, I agree with what Chris is saying because what this says is proposed budget and then after, and we'll, that's the line we're actually starting from. And then after proposed cuts, yet we're still increasing almost every one of these line items. And I think that's the part that's a little confusing when you look at that. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to digest each piece. Some of them are small, yeah. but percentage well, wise, it adds up. up. Yeah. Okay. Just, I, I want to make sure the yes. So, if our budget follows the inflation rate, if it's exceeding the inflation rate by two, two times, obviously you've got an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that we understand that money isn't worth what it was yesterday, but certainly not what it was last year. Mm -hmm. Things done, you can't buy the same thing for the same price. So I think we'd like to remind people that even though we have an increase in the budget, it should be within reason to an inflation rate that we have experienced, that will experience, and project forward. Thank you. Yep. And just, as we see here, one, uh, um, do we want to stop at this point and talk about tier one before moving on to tier two? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Do we want to go line by line, or do we want to just flag? I think good. it worked well too, but I just. Okay. Do we want to start with the ones that are on the second page, though? The I'll call them the Gimmies. Um, Two hundred six thousand. Can we all agree on those? Gimme. Well, they're they're just kind they're of math. Matter. Right. I yeah. Know, just, yeah. So we're all aware that's the starting point we're starting from. It's Two hundred six thousand. Yeah. Okay. So we get two hundred six in the bucket. Yeah. yeah. Good job, everyone. <laughs> All righty. Principal's office. Um, any discussion there? And I certainly welcome you folks to, you know, participate by all means as well. I mean, it's shaving supplies. I, I make a motion to accept the fifteen hundred dollars from line twenty-two hundred. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Okay. Thank you. All right, teaching supplies again, shaving supplies. I make a motion to accept both proposals from line 2300 for a total of $6,410. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Thank you. Professional develop, development, a, a decrease of 2000 I move that we do not touch that line. 2350 from middle school or high school. Second. Any, any discussion on that? Go ahead, Jason. So with some of the grant funding potentially running out for professional development at the district level, I think it's crucial that we have these funds supplied so we can do in-house professional development for our teachers. Thank you for that. Any other comments on that one? Okay, we have a motion on the table. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Okay. Textbooks. I make a motion to accept the total of $8,500 from line 2400 in textbooks. Second. Any discussion on that? Yes. Go ahead, Ed. Um, we've tossed textbooks down the road for 10 years. Uh, I don't want to get to the point where, gee whiz, someday we might walk on the moon. Okay, that's uh, something that's kind of been taking the backseat for far too much. Don't worry, I understand, I know I will be voting against, but I want to be said. 
Oh, no, absolutely. That's, yeah, I'm, and I'm glad you did. Any other comments on that? Would the principals like to comment at all? You don't have to. I'm just wondering if you'd like to. Okay. All right. Um, there's a motion on the table. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Abstain. Okay. <coughs> All right, instructional hardware software. Oh, a little over 20 gram. I make a motion to accept the total of, I believe that is 20,400 20, from line okay. 2450. Is there a second? second. All right. Okay, so I have a question. Um, Steve, Joy, principals, whoever can answer this. Um, these cuts are in printer supplies, software, hardware, and assistive technology, correct? So the assistive technology are those things like assistive in terms of those with disabilities who need those? That is correct. It would be, um, an example would be if a student needed an iPad for communication or a student needed a screen reader or something, or something like that, or larger monitors for visual therapy. And how much of, of these cuts of that, a lot of money there, um, it would, would be assistive technology, just curious. 2,500. 1,000 at the middle school and 1,500 at the high school. And how important, uh, I mean, I know from working in IT, those are very key and crucial and sometimes legally required. Um, so, right. based on, because assistive technology was never broken down in the budget before, it was right. wherever people could find money, they took it. Um, we put yeah. that in the budget. Based on expenses we've seen, for the time it's been in the budget, we feel we can comfortably make <coughs> those cuts without impacting what we would legally be or what would be necessary for the students. Okay. There was actually an excellent question. Any other comments? I have just a question in terms of the, the budget increase here, um, the net base, I guess, after these reductions of 274 to 319. Yes. Um, yeah. How, where does this put you in terms of a technology funding? Are you getting close to where you want to be, or are you still miles behind? Uh, I mean, that's a forty-five thousand dollars increase, but like eighteen percent for that budget line. Uh, but look at that the cut for we have. Um, we have yeah. seen an increase in the cost of the Chromebooks that we use for our one-to-one -one program, mm -hmm. so that increased it. This year, we proposed doing a four-year warranty on the new Chromebooks, which added approximately thirty thousand. That would be funded the parents would pay back the cost of the warranty rather than going out and buying a separate warranty from Worth Ave, mm -hmm. which we ask they do. It would be paid back to the school. So that money would come back to us, but it wouldn't be coming back in this budget cycle. So it would be an initial outlay and then hopefully it would be self-funding from there on out. So that's about a $30,000 increase in the budget. Uh, we also were, last year we were required because of some last minute, uh, no, I won't go into details, but we had to replace our firewalls and upgrade our filtering system because the company that made the firewall all of a sudden gave us a month and said, oh, by the way, it's no longer supported. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So that, that's the majority of the cases. Okay. Um, the proposed technology stuff, um, is any of this money connected to Ed plans? I'm sorry, what? Is any of the cut that we're talking about here connected to Ed Plans in particular? Does anybody know? Ed Plans? Yeah. No. It did, it did. Not, like Not at all. all right. This is a, the cuts in here based on what we've expended this year and looking at the trends. Mm -hmm. I'm fairly comfortable that this will have a minimal impact on the technology program. Any other questions or comments? Okay, there's a motion on the table. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay. Okay. Alrighty, library. I move that we keep line 2500 as is. Without the cuts. Without the cuts. Second. Discussion on that? Go ahead, Mark. Um, I, as much as uh, I like libraries, I think uh, your, your reduction is significant. Is probably necessary if you keep pulling things out of these line items, you're not going to be, you're going to have to find some place else to collect that cash if you want to meet your goal. Um, I think I, I will not support, 
I would I would support taking this reduction. Any other comments there? I would not support taking this reduction since it is in teen health and wellness that they're listing here. And knowing our social emotional state of our student population, this is something that should be supported for all our students. I'm sorry, Eric and then. Um, so the teen health and wellness, it's a database. So does that, will this cut, because I, I do hear what you're saying and I, I would be equally concerned, but by taking away that database, does that affect anything in terms of teen health and wellness or is it, I, I'm not sure what that database would be. But. So they use the database for research projects within the health um, curriculum um, throughout the year. So uh, they can certainly find other avenues for some of the things that they do. Right. Uh, but when I had a conversation with the librarian, she said that it's obviously this database is the most current information and it's used for those curricular reasons to keep the kids current um, without right. you know, laboring it. You know. But she also said that if she had to make the cut, that she would try to find other resources so that it would have a limited impact on what they do in the health classroom. Can I support what Jim just said for a second? From a middle school perspective, databases, especially around the area of wellness, creates a safer avenue for students to do research on topics that, if searched in a broader web-based sense, would probably lead them to some more dangerous findings right. and exactly. could impact their wellness in negative ways. Well, I think that we have, it's true. We have gateways in place for that with the technology in schools. Yeah, in school. Are, the, are these databases they're using from home? Or is it something they only use in school? No, they can access the library information through the library website. So it's something Chromebook at home. So they would be able to go to places they wouldn't want them to from home, or they go through the same firewall channels? I think through their, their account, they can then go through the, they can log into their account, and I think they can go into the library website from home, which I know they can do that, and then they can, I believe they can access the databases all the way down to even like our foreign language online program stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, my, my question was be, you, you brought this forward as the representative from the middle school to, to us as the item that you proposed cutting in this program. So obviously you felt that it was the, an item that, that should be suggested for a cut if you need to make one. And also, uh, what kind of utilization do we have? Any records of the kids actually using this the site or the existing site? Yes, well through my conversation with uh, Vicki Wright, who's our school librarian, she said that they use it um, through every quarter as part of a curricular project that they work on. But again, she told me that um, she could make other resources available to try to supplant that database. And that um, if given the need for a cut, that she could make another other avenues available. My, my other question is, we cut a line item. That all that means is we're reducing that particular line item. It doesn't mean that particular program. Uh, that is at the discretion of our administration. Mm -hmm. So um, even though these are targeted items, and I appreciate that, the librarian may make a choice to keep this in and of course, cut out some other resource within the library. But I think, but when I am making my decision as an individual this evening, I'm making it based on what's being shared with me. So I would have to make my decision believing that it's the website. I know what you're saying, Mark. But I'm gonna, I guess worst case scenario, my mind is this is what's going to be. But, but also that that is what is recommended by, right. by Jim and the library. Right. All cuts are difficult. And all the conversations are tough. And we're here making tough choices about tough things. And even in the conversations with, with Vicki, is a tough conversation. And we're all trying to make the best choices to minimize the impact of the cut. So I understand the difficult conversation. Yeah, understood. Thank you for that. So again, I, I'd like to move that we um, reiterate that we keep line 2500 library as is. Seconded. 
And, and before we, I take a vote, Joy wanted to say something. The, the only thing I was going to suggest is if we are looking for a way to make some cuts, but to keep that database, instead of cutting 2,000 from the middle school, I assume if we cut it about 1,000, the database could be recommended to keep, and we could still make a cut of 1,700. Instead of cutting 3,700, we could cut 2,700. So it would just be another approach if, if you so chose. I don't want to touch the line at all. I, I appreciate that other option. Don't want to touch it at all. Um, the motion is to keep it as is. We're not talking about the motion hasn't been amended. Um, all those in favor of the motion is, I believe, Maureen put forward. Aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 Okay, we need a. Yep, I. <laughs> no. I have Lisa for that. So yeah, which, we, yes, first. Hand, hands up for. Keeping it as is. Keeping it as is. Not me. Yes. No cut. For the motion. And the motion was keeping it as is. Eight. 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 I like your idea. Two, four, 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 no. No. Two, four, four six, six, seven, eight. The time. Eight. Oh, it's a tie. Tie. It's a tie. So do we go back and talk more? No, motion okay. passes. Doesn't it? No. Not for, not for budget. It has to pass by majority. No. Yeah. So can I can I make an amendment that we take this? Take accept the high school cuts, but the, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, accept the high school proposed cuts because this is in the middle school, correct? Okay, and then. They don't have the wellness database in the high school. No, our proposed cuts are for new titles. Okay, so then I would make an amendment that we accept the 1700 but leave the 2000 back in the high school. Second. You could, well, I apologize. <laughs> okay. You could do Joy's suggestion and we could keep the health database in there by only cutting the 1000 Okay, so then I would say let's accept $1,000 in cuts instead of the 2000 but except 1700 for the high school budget cuts. So you've amended your motion. I have amended my motion. I'm going to second your amended motion. Okay. Okay. Um, so we have a motion to accept the 1700 for the high school budget cuts. Second. All those in favor of the newest motion? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? You oppose or with? Maureen, Maureen. <coughs> okay. I'm cool. Maureen, Maureen is an abstention. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> okay, audio visual. Yeah, this represents 50% of the budget. It's replacement items, though. I mean, can we live without it? Yeah. Again, the, none of this is easy. It, we knew last year was tough, this year was going to be painful. So I'll make a motion that we accept the cuts as they're presented. I'll second that. Okay. Discussion? Yeah. Um, are any of these units for the, um, oh, I don't even know what they're called, for the blackboards in the classrooms? Are, are any no, of those? No, they're not the projectors in the classrooms. Okay. All right. Because I don't know what those units that you just in the classrooms. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. And if that was including those, uh, oh no, don't hurt me, sorry. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Maureen, will it be Jane? Is there any opposition? No. no. Thank you. <clears throat> Madam Chair? Yes. I just want to bring to the attention of the committee a running, the running tally. Please feel free to correct my math if I'm wrong. But I believe we we just surpassed two hundred fifty thousand dollars in cuts at this point. Thank you, and thank you for keeping the tally. Oh, counting the back page. Hmm. Counting the back page. Right? Counting the two hundred six, of course. Okay. The uh, first transportation line, the music festival. One. I make a motion that we accept line thirty one zero thirty three zero one as it's written. I'll second it, but I'd like to make a comment. Okay. Why are you proposing to cut that? 
<laughs> I know that you're a believer in, in the arts and music, I am. and I want to just hear from someone who is a proponent. I have a daughter who is in this program, and just as I have a daughter who will drive to the school, I will pay for her to go on this field trip. Any other, Chris? How many students are in this program? Are we talking 100 or 50? In the middle school, probably 50. Going on the field trip? The field Going on the field trip? Yeah, there's multiple field trips. Right. I mean, um, I would say somewhere around 450 students have access to these field trips. And um, I want to say maybe 80 go to Providence and maybe 100 or 70. Yeah, I, it varies. Maybe 60 to 80 go to. But like most modern day field trips, this has educational value and purpose towards the music goals, correct? Correct. How will this money be made up? It, it will increase the cost of the field trip. Uh, for the students. The families already pay for the field trips, yes? So yeah, this is it. just a subsidy for the Families pay for, yes, they do. This offsets some of the transportation costs so that the cost um, is less. Mark, I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you have a, a sense for how I paid $70 to send my daughter to the Hall State Tournament or wherever, the one that's out in yeah, it's usually, it's usually somewhere out in uh, northern Massachusetts, and then they go to Salem afterwards, and then they come back later on that. But so $70 right now is what I'm paying for. We're talking multiple field trips, right? So this is just... Yeah, they go to Providence to perform in front of the Bruins. They go... Yeah. Yeah. So this would so be a couple bucks extra. Oh, okay. no, they already paid for it. Right. Okay. All right. Um, go ahead, Mike. I'm uh, just wondering if... Uh, Students that go on athletic events for tournaments pay for these trips too. They pay, but they pay through the revolving account. So if you go to um, you know a track meet or something like that, you've paid by user fees, and then the user fees pay for the transportation and you know referees, other things that have not been So at the middle school, the user fees are not combined like they are at the high school. I'm not sure what the user fees are at the high school. I can speak for the user fees at the middle school, which is we have a separate user fee for athletics from the drama, drama club has their own user fee, and the music department has different fees for the But athletes. no user fee. It's not a user fee in that sense. It's more, you know, an event fee. You yeah. want to go on the event, right. you're paying a fee. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion on this one? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. opposed. Abstain? Abstain. You abstain? Yep. Okay. That passed. Um, the late bus one. I would like to make a motion that we do not take these um, reductions. And Second. Oh, second. 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 Third. Second. Fourth. Okay. Fifth. One hundred and two. Okay. For the late bus. Um, all, officially, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstain. Thank you. Yeah, so we keep the late bus. Yes. 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 I just did. Three days, please. Can increase this one by about. Okay, maintenance of grounds. $10, the $10,000. <laughs> Make it a motion to accept the cut of $10,000 from line 4211. Second. Could I ask one question? Why is it only on the high school side? Because it's a field. Yeah. The field. And the high school has a much larger budget for that. Okay. I think that's the difference. The okay. middle school has a really minor budget for the, they don't have the field. To for the use of the skid steer. Right. The water uses the field. Well, you're not going to put a skid steer. Why, why would you put a skid, skid, a skid steer on a field? <laughs> it's in a like, what would you? It's, I'm very familiar with what a skid steer is. I, I think it's just because of the budget line. Yeah. It'll hold the weight yeah, more. Yeah. 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 Oh. Go ahead, Mom. On the facility side, so one of our initiatives is to buy the piece of equipment for the skid steer and right. do some of this work in house. That's so right. it increases our labor costs Problem. for our uh, custodians, but the but overall I, savings instead of contracting the event yeah. um, would be saved. And we're hoping this evidently is an additional item that has not been considered by us um, to increase the uh, home repair 
initiative even further than what we were originally <coughs> suggested by buying the skid steer offset cost. Correct. So I, I, that's what, is that correct, Joy? I believe part of what we think the skid steer could do is to help us with sanding and salting the parking lot and not have to contract um, out for, I'm, I'm looking at our yes. custodian, I hope he doesn't mind. No, that's um, right. We, we contract out now in larger storms right. to move snow. So if we get the skid steer, we can move it ourselves. We're planning on getting salting equipment for the trucks. We can do our own salting and sanding here because that gets contracted out now. So there's numerous stuff that we can do ourselves. We, in the spring, we have a company come in, they sweep the parking lots as attachments for this. We can get our own sweeper, do it ourselves, and save money long term. But What's the problem? A skid steer? Yeah. Oh, tremendously long. long. We talk, we talk Believe me, I know equipment. Maureen <laughs> probably does as well. Yeah. That, that was in your capital plan. Yeah. And yeah. You can discuss it later, but yeah. one of the, the items that they should be over there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, again, my question was I just didn't know why it was um, focused on the high school. I'd, uh, like, I'd like somebody to identify where the nice round number of $10,000 came from. You know, I'll, I hate round numbers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 999. Yeah, I think you have to talk around numbers. Yeah, right. we, Is there uh, any more savings that could be uh, incorporated in that to, to help You know, Mark, recover? to be honest with you, we, we don't have the piece of equipment. So, yeah. You know, we're assuming the capital plan will come in. We're assuming it will work the way we do. But I, I mean, honestly, it's, it's new to us. Um, we're hopeful. Um, we would love it to provide more savings for us. And if it does, Next year, we'll be able to reduce the line item more, but at this point, it's it's a bit of an unknown. Okay. I Wrong actually number know seven. how to operate one if you need somebody. <laughs> I'm very versatile. I'm sorry, I'm not going to. Round number seven. <laughs> Thank you. All right, any other discussion? I think we have a motion on this one. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstain? Okay. Thank you. Uh, maintenance equipment. Uh, Madam Chair. Mm hmm. That, that gets us 1% below our original starting point from this evening. We're at $261,010, I believe. $10? Okay. Yeah, there was um, that weird one, the 410 up top, oh, yeah. under 2300 Yeah. Okay, maintenance equipment. Production of musical instrument repairs, science equipment repairs. Repairs always make me nervous. I make a motion not to accept line 4231. I'll second for discussion. Any question? Go ahead. Okay, so $500 over $178,000 proposed budget. I mean, I appreciate that somebody had made the effort to fight back. For the <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Evidently, and again, I don't support necessarily musical equipment cuts, uh, but and equipment repair, uh, maintenance, when you cut those kind of things, you end up uh, having to replace your equipment sooner. I, I think this is an item that I'd like to send back uh, for rediscussion to see if anything within that equipment line item could get us more significant cut out of it. Um, but to even vote on the $500, the scope of what we're talking about tonight, I, th I think is, is moved. Um, I would like the administration to bring in more information back in March of perhaps what either other equipment maintenance items could be um, either uh, sent out or done in house that might save a few more dollars, uh, one hundred seventy-eight thousand dollars. Smart decision. Any other discussion on that? And forgive me, do we actually have a motion on this one? I made a motion not to accept. Not to accept. Do we want to? Do that with the idea that administration will come back. Yes. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Would you like me to rescind to table it? No, we can just decline just it now. They can okay. come back. I, I just can I just I have to comment here. I was okay. promising myself that I wasn't ready, but I can't believe that we're going to have the administration go back over five hundred dollars to try to find a few more to waste their time on that. We have way too many other things going on around here. Just if we're if we're gonna cut it, we're not gonna cut it. It's five hundred bucks. Let it go. Let them do their jobs. When you get to the end, we have more cuts to pass. Do you think it's worth looking no. at? It, it depends on what number the committee wants to get to. We could wait till we get to the end, and you can decide if you feel like we've met our goal, and then we can base it on that. Okay. I'd be happy to do whatever you'd like us to do. 
So, Maureen, understood. Um, at, at this point, did we actually vote that? No, no, okay. I didn't think so. So let's vote it first, rather than we were talking about changing it. Um, all those in favor of not accepting this at this time as, as Jason's motion. Are you asking questions or voting? Voting. Okay. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. You need to do it away. You need opposed and Yep. Opposed, abstained. Everybody has a hand up. Um, acquisition of equipment. Make a motion to accept the cut of fourteen thousand one hundred seventy-seven dollars from line seventy-three thirty. Seven seconds. <laughs> Discussion on that one. Okay. Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Abstain. Thank you. Replacement of equipment. <coughs> Move to accept as uh, presented. Second. Question. Sure. <coughs> um, the middle school, where one of the items in here with those TI graphing calculators, do we actually buy buy those calculators? Well, you have some in the class that's in classroom. Yeah, yeah. classroom yeah. sets in our algebra yeah. one for oh, okay. for eighth yeah. grade. Yeah, right. But, uh, right. So okay. they're yeah. expensive. Obviously, yeah. over time. Yeah. I bought yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, haven't we all? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, was, I was just saying that they were using our algebra one classes. In the eighth grade, and over time, the class set some of the grades, and we've had quite a few years, so that's why it's on there. But um, obviously, we can, you know, wait another year if we need mm -hmm. to. So. You know, the other thing I would suggest that the um, KES and KIS uh, teachers, I don't know how many of the teachers here, but a lot of them use the um, uh, uh, GoFundMe uh, to buy a lot of Thank you. And, I know they get all kinds of technology. I don't know if you guys use that here, but that might be another way. Um, I mean, I hate doing this, but obviously we have to look at, at things that we want to tie. Another thought was the graphing calculators, and you said you bought four. I, how many of those are still in use? How many of them are still in one piece? <laughs> 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 but I feel like there's probably some out there. Right, that can be donated. That maybe we find out. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, people did buy. Yeah. 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 The windowing, and so yeah, what yeah. you have for functioning yeah. calculus yeah. yeah. might be like 18, where originally it was 25, because we've had them since before I've been there, believe it or not, mm -hmm. and we wow. haven't replaced them. Wow. So, yeah, um, but we'll look at alternatives, and that's why it's on there. I mean, we'll look at alternatives to making that happen. Okay. Any other discussion? Um, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. Jason, where were you at? So I was hoping someone would ask me that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to feed it to you, Jason. Um, yeah. We're currently at $291,257. I concur. I concur. <laughs> wow. I move that we accept. The potential tier one cut, or not, not potential, the tier one cuts from the uh, fiscal 2019 budget and stop here at $291,000. Seconded. Okay, I'm, I'm going to open it up for discussion. I think that we've done a great effort. The administration has gone overboard as usual. It's heartbreaking to see us even have to consider these cuts. And I represent the Silver Lake Regional School Committee from the town of Plumpton. And I believe that this is an educationally sound budget, and that's why I'm running for re-election, to be here for the students of our district. I'm fiscally responsible for my town. I pay a lot of money in taxes, as we all do. However, this is our future. The, this is our future. Okay, thank you, Mario. Any other discussion? I, I want to go through tier two um, because you're is this in the budget right now these are in the budget they're in the budget they haven't been taken out yet okay 
There's a motion on the table, so I'm going to. Is there any other discussion? The motion is to stop where we are now. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain? Okay. Did you get that? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Can you clarify what? Okay. So we're both different. Boring. Stopping after one or, or stopping after one. And not moving on to two at all? Yes. Not yes. moving on to two at all. And that's what our budget would be other than you folks could possibly be with you. So, do we have any further discussion so, on that or not? No. We're, we're going to vote it again. Can we just, I can try tomorrow. Yeah. We're going to, everyone who has it. All those in favor of stopping at this point? All Put those in favor of stopping. stopping at this point? So you've got the four. <laughs> All those opposed? And we got one abstain. See? <laughs> what? You still wouldn't have passed. So where is it? Didn't pass. It wouldn't have passed with five vote of you. Should have done the way you Sorry, I think we we owe the taxpayers a discussion. I'm going to yes, vote we're going to continue. She just slammed her. What do you have not done? Okay, so we're going to go on to tier two now. Three days because I'm not thinking about the other thing I got coming up. Um, you should certainly can. Thank you. So even though I did not support stopping, um, I don't find anything further down the list necessarily. Uh, um, but I think that for the benefit of the administration, we haven't done the homework, so we should look at these items. And if you want to go through them one at a time, I personally won't be supporting any of them. But I think that it's important that we read them in and that the, we had that discussion because this is a budget meeting, not a, an end of discussion on the subject. No, agreed. And, and the committee did agree to move forward going through these. So Thank let's you. go through them again. I also would like to hear anybody who's opposed us keeping them what their reason is. So, mm -hmm. so. Okay. Do you, well, you want to know why we want to keep something? <laughs> <laughs> we want to get rid of it. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Let's make a motion and oh. one individual to be discussed in this place. Um, well, Joy, do you want to chat about them at all sure. at a high level, even because we had stopped yeah, at tier one? Yeah. We had stopped the superintendent at tier one. Um, so I'll, I'll just do a little bit of an overview, and um, a lot of this has to do with instructional hardware software, which I, uh, Steve was kind enough to come this evening, so I'll look to him. So Steve, if you remember, came in and he talked about the four-year warranty on the Chromebooks and how it would save a tremendous amount of time with staff. Our goal would be that we would purchase the four-year lease, and stop me at any point when I misspeak, because I know I will, and then we would hopefully recollect that insurance from the parents. But what it would mean is it wouldn't involve the amount of time and effort our current tech staff is doing, but why don't you say it a little more coherently? Okay, so to specifically, right now we have one tech who is spending on the majority of his time either fixing Chromebooks, shipping out Chromebooks for repair, and waiting for them to come back. Um, so the four-year warranty would allow us to immediately, and it would be for incidental damage too, so if a Chromebook gets dropped, yeah. um, you wouldn't believe what some of those Chromebooks have gone through. <laughs> with, those, with that series of Chromebooks coming in in the ninth grade, we would end up sending them back to Dell, we'd have a replacement back and within a week as opposed to the several weeks to months that sometimes the repair company can take getting them back. The advantage to that is There'll be more time for the tech to do other things. And it will put the unit back in the hands of the students somewhere. We have a tremendous amount of loaners out right now, and we often run out, and students <coughs> may have to borrow one from someone else. Or else. So that's the four year warranty. Okay. Oh, this sure. is an educationally sound choice, deep in the budget. I can, um, if you're interested more in the numbers, that these two total cuts, I can give you more specifics as to what they are. Okay. I'm, I'm sure about Eric personal, I apologize. Um, so, just to be clear, is this number, is this cutting some Chromebooks or just the warranty? Um, the first line, the 7200 and the 37400, that's cutting just other hardware, software, and the warranty. The bottom number, the 7000, oh, is eliminating right. the entire one. Yeah. Right. Okay. And so, again, the, the warranty would only be for 
the new the freshman coming in. Yeah, this right. is not the warranty. <laughs> the, the hope would be that as they come in, first of all, it would be a little bit of a discount to the parents to buy the warranty through Dell than buying it every year for worth the average. Would say of them twenty five to thirty five dollars over the life of the warranty. Right. If we were able to fully fund that, then that the money could then go next year to pay for the four-year warranty for next year's college. And, and so this is for freshmen or for everybody? So we, we it would be the freshmen starting out and then as we continue the program. Okay, so all right. The money coming in yes. from okay. this group would then go to fund the four-year warranty yep. so that it would eventually work its way through the cycle. Okay. So if, if, I'm, if I might add to what I was just saying, I, I, think, I think this would be a reasonable item and, and finance committee if you, if you guys don't mind listening to what i'm saying i think it, it sounds like purchasing the warranties through the budget rather than parents going directly to the warranty companies yeah it's a cost to us right at the off the bat like you said but then the parents instead of paying the warranty companies they'll then pay the school which will then fund like he just said next year's um uh did you want to finish? With no, the I think you know what I was going to say. Okay. Yeah. Gordon, I'm going to ask you to wait one moment, Mark. Yeah, so the idea is to have an incentive program so that our parents go for the four-year plan so that we can front load the cash back into this program so that it's almost a zero item. And when Steve presented, I had a discussion early with him um, about this on a meeting that I couldn't make. And he explained it very well. As long as there's an incentive not to go year by year that we try to front load this with each class coming in buying a four-year plan. And there is one other factor that you should consider too, and that is that there are a certain percentage of parents who may not be able to afford the warranty, which we make exceptions for. In those cases when the Chromebook gets damaged, we end up basically absorbing the cost of the repairs. And that can have to be more than the warranty. This would then cover those as well. Could I just ask Steve, how much is the actual warranty out of this? Just uh, the estimate is approximately $28,000 out of that. So if you were interested in making some of the cuts, if we kept the $28,000, it would still keep the warranty. And that's under the high school only. And I do have a full breakdown of all what these numbers represent that I can go through Gordon? So is this really a one-time capital item? That will be more of a revolving account that you're looking at, where it's a one-time fund for this, and as the money for the next class comes in, you'll have the money to do the warranty for the following class, because that's what it sounded like. From a conceptual standpoint, in my mind, I think that makes sense, but from a financial standpoint, I can't speak to any of that because I don't know how that that's working. But it sounds—it sounds like it's a one-time spend to put the money out there to get the warranties and then you in capture place, it and then back. you're going to capture it back yeah. from the parents. So it's more like a revolving. Yeah, we might not capture it 100. Yeah, yeah, I understood. Right. That's right. what it sounds like more of. Mm -hmm. Right. So is is this you're really going to be a revolving account? Mm -hmm. And we—that's a little bit different then. Okay. So, but you don't see this as a recurring. I don't expense. see spending twenty-eight thousand dollars every year to buy a warranty. In my mind, I would see it being recouped in a large part this year, and then it would be whatever the difference would be. So, so the question I would have to the committee is, can you include this in your capital expense for this year to get that program going and remove it from the operating side? That so exciting. that allows you to take the... I don't the, think I'm going to go down that road. Because if it's just a one-time cost, if it's twenty-eight thousand dollars this year, and it's a three thousand dollar operating cost, you know, if that's an estimated number that you got three thousand dollars for parents that can't afford it, it would just seem to me that this that would give you the ability to offer the warranty, and take it out of the operating cost. Yes, I see your point now. Do you have a rebuttal on that one, Mark? Well, when Steve had explained it to me, it was pretty much a zero cost item if, if we got everybody to buy in for the four year plan or most of them. But it's, it, it straddles over to budget seasons. Right. So the it, it's, it's zero sum over two budget seasons. Over two budget seasons. Yeah. Right. But the first upload was the 28th, 
when, when you realize the personnel and the postage we're spending, there's another act factor that, that was included in the new program, right, Steve? That's right. So right now, that po your postage budget is paying for all these uh, to be shipped, both ways or one way? Um, to repair. I don't know if the, I believe the number covers shipping well, to them and they ship it back. Yeah. Right. So we're going to have a reduction of postage line item also just for and I don't know how much that is, but everyone emails out because the warranty includes the postage when, when they buy the new warrant. From okay, so that takes postage down, is what right. you're saying. So okay. It's and that might coming out of the repair line. All right. I don't know how that is. What are the committee's thoughts on what Gordon suggested that we put that number in the capital? Go ahead. We've done that in Kingston. <laughs> against my, for many years, taking a lot of IT items out of our operating budget to get our budgets down to where the town needs us to be and putting those items over there. So Chris, you would look at our Kingston budget this year and say, what happened with your IT? You just went up a huge number. Well, we didn't because we've been taking it out. One of the dangers with that is putting it into a separate cap capital plan, whether the town would, would approve that or not. Kingston, they always do, uh, because the finance committee is typically yeah. Behind that, and that's it's worked well. Here we have three towns, so you put it, take it out of this budget, put it into you know capital plan one for one year, and it, it doesn't get approved, and it's out of this budget. That that would be my concern going to three town meetings. Um, you know, I can speak to Kingston. I think Kingston would approve it. I have no idea if Halifax and Plumpton would, and we would just obviously need one town, I believe, for capital plan. Just need two. You don't three. Two. Two. So that would be one of my concerns. And also then taking technology items out of your budget, which then in later years it looks super superficial, superficially as if it's been increasing and it's not. Now again, that's just semantics. Go ahead. I was just going to mention that previously our capital plan has been primarily fixed asset type items with the longer life. And this one doesn't meet that criteria, the committee could make a decision to <coughs> just with choice going forward, but traditionally it's been those type of fixed asset items that have a longer life. Agreed. Agreed. I think it's an interesting mm -hmm. consideration. Based on what Christian just said, I agree with that. Could you speak up, please? We can't hear you, John. Oh. All right. Because of what Christine just said, I believe that this doesn't want a capital plan. I agree. Thank you. Has no business with and the additional uh, IT equipment that Kingston has been funding the schools, local schools, we have not treated it as capital either. We have been funding it through some town funds, but not capital. But thank you, Gordon. I, I appreciate that. Was the intent for parents to pay one time freshman year for the four years, or do they have the option to pay a little bit each year over the course of four years? Because I think that would impact yeah, they, the, the, the return of funds as well. They, they can, but the incentive would be there for the go four years. And the reason we want that incentive there is to, so that we can front load this fund and have the money forward to make to pay the bill. Well, let's do it. We can add it to the pot and piece. Just add one more fee. If you have a Chromebook and a car, then you pay. Then you're all set. Bingo. You know, for parents that can do it, I'll be honest with you, taking out insurance, I, there was a year I completely forgot. It just, the one year a piece of paper came home, and then a piece of paper didn't come home. And so if I could pay it my freshman year and not have to worry about it, because they take some serious abuse, as you had said. So that's just one town. Yeah. So where are we at? Did we make a? We have. No, we have we've been, been just talking about. Yeah. We're not going to pull late buses. Nope. No, no, no. Not going to pull chrome bolts. Want me to move? Uh, to move any of yes. Three yes. So I made this one question, um, Jim. For the middle school proposed cuts, and, and Steve, 
what were you proposing on cutting from the middle school exactly? Okay, the 7200. So, so in this line, we would be looking at cutting another thousand miles out of the repair budget at the middle school. Um, software and software school management. Uh, one of the things that the librarian in the middle school had asked was converting the library management system from the current library world that she uses now to desk, all its destiny. That is used at the elementary schools and it's used at the high school. What that would allow it to do is a student's book history would then flow through from K to 12. Uh, that's 3,200, uh, taking another 2,000 out of supplies, and then another $1,000 out of assistant technology. Are you, are you comfortable with those cuts? Um, when I first asked for the cuts, I did phase one, which was you know, the impact, but not severe. Um, this, I would say, would be more of a major impact on um, everything in this, these two lines from the middle school, high school. Yeah, I, I personally would be against cutting the 7,200, and then at the high school, the, I, I, I would want to keep the 28,000, but the remainder of that, is it those similar items? Uh, there are at the, back on the tier one at the middle school level, we eliminated some replacement printers, but we had also replaced a lot of printers at the high school, that would be eliminating uh, three replacement printers, which we have not replaced in a long time. So the high school tends to print more copiers, but there are certain areas like sped snaps, certain specialty printers that the copiers are less desirable to use for. So if you're printing an IEP, you don't want to pop it up and come grabbing it. Um, also at the high school, it would be eliminating, well, we talked about the Chromebooks, um, in the phase one, we eliminated a couple of, there are three coordinator laptops that are very old and becoming non-functional. Uh, two of the coordinators would be able to use Chromebooks, so we eliminated that at tier one. This would be eliminated at third one uh, for a replacement. And then cutting another 4,000 from supplies at the high school. So, I don't we could squabble. I, based on what you said, I didn't want to cut any of those items. I think I think they're all important. The four thousand from supplies. I mean, for me, I mean, do you think that, that you could live without those four thousand, or do you need the four thousand? Um, we can live without anything. It's yeah, to be honest with you, um, we will make it work, and we will do the best we can. But you need it's, to have the equipment to be able to do your job. Hitting the uncomfortable level. Right. To be honest with you, that. <laughs> obviously, if you're talking cutting this versus cutting staff or cutting personnel, I, I would make a motion right now that we don't take any of these cuts for 2450. But that's just me. Second. Okay. When you say any of these cuts, you're talking about 2450. Okay, just 2450. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it was seconded. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? I'd like to move to leave the transportation line on where it is for the late bus. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. I'd like to move the Chromebooks to stay as they are also. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Okay. Thank you, Steve. Very good. Could I um, just say one thing? This does not have to do with the cuts specifically, but you did ask me. The it was a request last month up to up here. Um, we are working our way slowly through uh, the mess. We are hoping to get the phone systems converted over the six sometime in the next few weeks, mm -hmm. um, which should start reducing our telephone costs. Uh, it's been a logistical nightmare dealing with some of the fax lines and the line lines, trying to figure out, well, we have this number with Verizon, where does it go? Mm -hmm. We, because there's no real documentation for us in the play. It comes into the building and they can't play with the um, Certain lines can't be converted. We can't convert elevator lines. We can't convert fire alarms or burglar alarm lines. So we're just trying to work our way through what's going on in the process of converting the first major hurdle, hopefully within the next few weeks. So we should start to see that coming back to us. Okay, and, and I guess, is there any estimate of what we should start seeing come, coming back to us? Um, honestly, off the top of my head, I don't even remember what the numbers on the phone bills are. Um, 
but one of the estimates the phone company provided to us is that when it's all said and done, we should start seeing at least 40% savings. About a 40% savings. But they're, they're delaying it so painfully long, I, I'm it's, not sure my grandchildren may see. Right. <laughs> it's, uh, in truth, it's not the company that did the phone system that's dealing with the yeah. Steve, I guess and I'm not going to prolong the budget discussion tonight on this, but it, can this be escalated? I mean, what it, it what I think I've been hearing is, it, and this is not against you, it's Verizon, please don't think it's against you. They're dragging their feet, we're not moving this along, therefore we're not seeing 40% savings. How can we get this escalated so that this starts to move? Yeah. Previously in the meeting, you said this wasn't a discussion about the budget for tonight, and I wonder if we could put this off until our meeting, which is next week. I'd like to continue with this, the budget process, okay, well, and I and I apologize, Steve. I understand well, you're here the same to discuss the telephone. Yeah, but I'm sorry, Maureen. What was that? It's sorry. not part of the current budget discussion, and I wondered if we could wait and do it at our regular meeting next week since this is a budget sure. topic. I just thought, well, Steve was here. Yes, I understand so that, I and I apologize to Steve for that. Okay. We're also all here on a, an extra night. Yes, yes, we are. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Steve, thank you. Okay, um, moving on to the next section of Tier 2. Madam Chair. Yes. So, I've, I've been on the committee for four years now, and several times when we've suggested program additions to the budget, we've been asked by the towns, what programs are we eliminating? Um, we finally have had some movement with retirements that have eliminated some positions and some programs, and these are not new additional staffing requests. These are new, modernized programs that are required to, to keep up with some mental health, social, emotional um, initiatives, and also to keep current with STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, um, you know, initiatives that the state has put on us through mandates that have been unfunded by them. And I am not in favor of removing any of these items from the middle and high school draft tier two staff adjustments. Is that a and motion? That is a motion, yes. Second. Okay. Discussion? I'll say something if I could. Sure. Um, I know I'm new to the process, but I'm trying to see the, the, the paperclip analogy and try to fit it in here, I think. Um, we just said no reduction to those three line items in tier budget two, potential cuts for 117000 at the high school and 16000 at the middle school. Um, I think in looking back and have experience with the budgets, doing those kind of cuts just is a delay of the expense. You know, we may not do a hundred of these Chromebooks this year and we're cutting them. If we did, then next year we'll probably come back and do it. I think the books fit that same pattern where we cut books in the budget and now we're coming back and then they're that much older, that much worse condition, they got fewer of them they got lost. We need to now increase the budget at a larger pace. Um, so I'm looking at this from a, a structural standpoint of almost everything we put down in terms of principal's office or library, audiovisual, whatever the cuts were, may need to be reinstated later on. And I don't know if the towns are later going to have growth to support that. I, mean, I think we've been in this kind of pickle with the schools and the budgets and the towns for several cycles now where if they don't have growth in the town to support, oh, we got extra money to share. I think every year this committee who probably those have been here a while experience that every year we got we got to kind of make everything work what we got. Um, and the trend is less students, as sort of the report I saw on here said, coming through over the next few years, we're getting less state funding. That's naturally, if we just keep a dollar for dollar equal, going to reduce the assessments of towns. So I'm just trying to make a point here that we really haven't made any multi-year cuts, I guess, because some of these printers that we don't do this year, we'll have to do next year. Um, so I, I don't think I agree with necessarily maintaining um, or not reducing the staff ads. I think they're ads um, going forward because these um, are more many years. They're program ads. Yes. Replacing programs that we will no longer have, and it's not staff ads because we would have lost these people. It would have been an attrition move. Mm -hmm. 
And these are programs we've been trying to put into the curriculum for our students for several years now. Sure. And the town's retort has always been, we'll show us what you're cutting in right. order to get these in. Right, right. And I think we're at that point finally. Yes. Right. The Allied Help does bring in the Chapter 74 funds. It's also one of the programs that CTE can speak to that um, will hopefully attract more female students, and it can also attract students who could go directly into career sure. or transition back into the AP program and end up going to college to get their nursing license. So, and also students from other towns. Yeah, I mean, that's I think those, those are, I'm not as educated on, but in the big picture, looking at the time cut, I hear it was, it was deferring an expense later on, which doesn't fit with the decrease in the student body and, and budget constraints based on salaries and health care costs and everything else that we make it nearly over 6, 8, 10 percent. To some extent, it's, it's sort of a shuffle or a realignment of a pool of money and how it gets allocated to some extent. But I, I do hear you, and there's a sustainability issue. Clearly, you know, um, the next few years are going to be even tougher, we think. You know, last year was tough, this year is even tougher, next year is going to be extremely tough. Having said that, and I, I do have one more Sorry, comment if you want to say something else. I was just going to say, in, in terms of uh, you know these items, I think you know like with the um, adjustment counselor. I mean, you look at what what happened in Florida. I mean, there's, the, the youth today. There's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of um, uh, autism. There's a lot of needs of our you know younger population and people that are constantly saying we need you know we should spare no expense. If you look at discussions going on now, people are saying we need to do fundraisers to put you know blocks in front of every door and you know we shouldn't be sparing any expense to protect our kids well part of that is an adjustment counselor is very much it's, it's not a bar in front of a door but boy it, it probably acts like a lot better than that um, and you know the same with the, with the uh, bright program if I'm pronouncing that correctly um, that's how I help teachers is slightly different um, that's but that could also bring in revenue in terms of tuition well, to the students. So I don't see that, you know, I see that as potentially um, not just a great program for our kids and to keep them here instead of charter schools, but the, the, the adjustment counselor and the Bright program, I, I see that as, you know, protecting our, our kids in a, in a really changing world and um, changing needs of, of younger kids. I still, I still would like to go through, oh, I am in support of keeping all of this. But I think we should go through it line by line so that anybody present can tell me why we shouldn't spend this money on these things. Just so that anybody there can justify it to us. Okay. I don't mean members. Hold the first one. I'm talking about members in the audience. Right. Jason. Uh, just want everybody to know where we are, too. Okay, so. We cut $291,257, and if my math is correct, our current increase of the total budget would be 2.78%. Is it accurate? I did not track that. I was tracking I, the I did it in my dollars. head, and I came up with 2.8, so I'm going to say yes. Okay. I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Thanks for checking, guys. <laughs> I'm going to get away with anything. Okay. I'm going to ask one question if I, I can. And, I'm not asking for the the whole bright um, overview you provided us, but what percentage of the student population will benefit from that program? I understand the environment, the climate we're in, et cetera. I'll be honest with you, my fear is I'm, I'm looking forward to next year, and that's one that um, I, I think supporting that next year is is you know maybe going to cost us something on the on another side. So I just want to make sure. Wait, what do you mean? I, I don't understand. I, it's a phrasing of your, your question about costing us. On costing the on the other side. I just I want to know what you mean by that. You're talking about the break program. Right. If we if we implement that mm -hmm. next year, it you know I I believe the you know, the economy is going to shrink us a bit further. What, we're going to have to make that? a harder, we're going to have to make another decision next year. So if I, I don't want to put this in for one year. Paula, we're, we're three years late on putting this program in. Exactly. 
This, this, we are behind the eight ball. This is not, can we wait one more year? We've already waited too long. This program can't wait. We're having students who come in and out from mental health hospitalizations and they're put back into the classrooms and the teachers do the best they can, but they're not trained to deal with that kind of milieu with these students. And it ends up those students have to go back out more often. We can't keep them here in their own community, in their home school. With this program, there's that buffer between the teachers and reintegration into the schools so those students can integrate at a pace that's healthy for them, manageable, so they end up staying. And this is reducing the mental health issues that our students will face. This is also used by kids who have concussions. Let's look at how many kids of athletes have had concussions. They, they can't be in rooms with smart boards. They're not supposed to look at their Chromebook. They can't be, um, you know, taking tests and quizzes at the same pace. And this room can also be utilized for those students. And in the third tier, the most recent tier of students who are using the BRAIN program are kids who are coming back with medical complications to Lyme's disease because they're having some really psychoactive results with Lyme's disease now that, that's devastating, scary, and medicine doesn't even know how to deal with it. But the BRAIN program, this, this room, a transition room, a Zen room, whatever you want to call it, whether we adopt BRAIN fully or we just get some ideas and clues from them, is going to benefit our kids to the point that it, it's not even worth us discussing it. And Ed, I understand why you started this and you got me going, but... <laughs> no, I just want anybody I, here I, who has I absolutely, about spending money. Right. I absolutely think that we have a moral obligation to put this program in place. I right. agree. Well, Jason, you, you got to my own goals. So. <laughs> yeah, thank you. But Jason, I just want to reiterate. I support these things. I know you do. You know I, I know you do. And I'd just like anybody here to justify any of the reasons that they should be cut. My concern would be this type of a program is taking away from the everyday average student that doesn't Whoa. need a lot of additional. Whoa, well, who's an average normal. student? Exactly. That's wow. A, the 90% that don't need this program. Oh my gosh. Can you can Go identify who those 90% are right what if, now? What if it was your kid? You're completely off on your What point. if it was your kid? I'm just wow. my opinion. And, and oh he God. has a right to his opinion. Do we have our right to retort. Oh, yeah. I'm not. And, I, I, and you didn't recognize anyone in the audience. I know speak. I didn't, Marmy. Thank I, you. Do you want me to go over and bop him on the head? Yes, I would actually. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Laura. Well, I just wanted to say that um, the district I work in implemented the Bright program for the first time this year, and it has been wildly successful. And one of the comments that I've heard from um, our middle school, which is where the program was implemented, is they had sort of anticipated who might need the program coming in. And of the students that have participated in one way or another in the program, more than half of them are students that they did not anticipate exactly. needed it. So even the you know regular students, exactly. you just don't exactly. know who's going to need this, this kind of support. So it, by I, definition, it's a regular ed program. We they need might. it so badly. Go ahead, Mark. Okay, I'd, I'd just like to speak from my days as, as a scoutmaster and having to deal with kids that have concussion issues. The concussion line item here, to me, totally supports this program, just, just from that line item alone. And we have kids that were in the top 10%, top 4% of their class that got involved with a concussion issue, were delayed coming back to school months because they weren't handled correctly coming back to school in that transition program. And, and you cannot replace time in a classroom or time in your school system. Or time healing that brain. It is. And, and this, I mean, all of these items speak exactly to the mission of the Silver Lake School Committee. The allied health situation, I know I'm going off subject, but that's our job is to prepare students to leave this institution with employable skills. And that particular line item speaks more to that than, than mountains of, of the things we hear do with the, the local environment. These are employable kids walking right out the door. We Absolutely. can't give any of our kids a better program than the health yeah. science program. I suspect that you can't, I don't want, I'm not looking for names. I'm looking for a percentage of the population of these school students in all, in Kingston, Clinton, exactly. Halifax, and the region that are on IEPs, disabilities, because I believe they wouldn't fit into his, uh, 
explanation of a normal student at a 90%. If, if, if I may, I was just going to, if I could just um, um, not necessarily answer Ed's question, I apologize, but I wanted to speak to a little bit about why we wanted to bring the Bright program in. Um, it's really a cost savings for our district. Some of these students who are unable to come into class, again, remember, we're legally obligated to educate these students. So we have to pay for tutoring services. We have to pay for what we call FUEL, which is an online educational program. We have tutors who go to their homes. Um, we have students who come in and out of hospitalizations and are missing a tremendous amount of school and often end up in a placement. I mean, we do have students that we believe if we had gotten this program last year or the year before that we would not have some of our out-of-district costs that I know the town has struggled with. So I, I realize that this may be difficult, the numbers may be small, but they are somebody's child, and you know that's our job, is to educate everybody's child, and also to provide the best services, and to keep our students in school, and to give them the supports in a safe place. Um, you know, again, our goal and our focus in this budget is meeting the needs of diverse learners. You know, that's really what all of our programs have been, is to stay focused on the students. Mm -hmm. This is a program that I really do believe we need, um, you know, we've invested a lot of time looking at it. Um, I think the savings will be astronomical in terms of what it will mean to our students. And I think also in terms of some students potentially wouldn't be able to stay with us without these resources. And again, this is a regular education program. I really do want to stress this. This is not designed for special education. This is a regular <coughs> education program. Not that a child couldn't access it if they were on a special education plan, but this is designed for regular education students. So it's it's a different program than some of the other ones that we may have presented. Sorry. Go ahead, and then I, I want to make one comment. You should go first, because I want to close the discussion. Okay, I don't disagree. <laughs> we may have to stand in front of town meetings supporting a number that the towns don't want us to. We have, um, one second, Maureen. We just developed a um, narrative, perhaps I would call it, if we could capture this conversation and pull it and put it in bullet points. This was a wonderful discussion, and it should be argued very similar to the passionate way you just did in your comments. We may have to stand in front of town meeting and give that scenario, give that basis. I'll have to in Halifax probably. So. I think this discussion is the basis for supporting this in town meeting if we don't walk in with the absolute support of <coughs> those that you know, kind of help us push these things through. Go ahead. Madam Chair, well yes. said. I appreciate you leading us through this budget discussion again this year with the grace like you did last year. Thank you. I make a motion to close the discussion on this budget. Seconded. Okay. Do you have a comment? Before? I have a question first. All right. Oh, no. Sure. Yeah. Well, I, was, I mean, I'm new to these four pieces at the bottom. So I just heard that the allied health teacher and the, the Bright program would actually be cost savings. Do we have any clue where that would be savings or, or revenue on the, on the allied health side? Because we look at these as a cut. And maybe it's not a cut. Maybe it's an ad that, like you said, creates revenue, creates savings. Where are the savings? So I'll be all for it. Well, I'm not sure this saves. So uh, if I may, for Allied Health, um, we received something called a Perkins Grant. Mm -hmm. The idea is we would fund half the cost of the teacher until the program is approved through Chapter 74. Once that's approved, we receive additional revenue for the students. The additional revenue should be able to support the cost of the teacher. Great. And then if we don't, if I, we've had lengthy discussions about this. It's going to be hugely popular. Wildly popular. If we did have slots not filled by our own Silver Lake students, we would have the ability to to wish in and per, perhaps capture students that are going someplace. That's else. what I meant. So, yeah. Yeah. It's not really a cost, but we didn't put so right. any of these materials that got from that right. 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 the, the net yeah. positives or the net zero. Right. Right. So, but the other one, where would the savings come from? It would be as the tutors somewhere else in the budget lines to give tuition to students. So in addition, you're back on the bright. I'm back on the bright. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Yeah. 
from the kids. So one of the cost savings does come from tuition and our fuel education, which is an online program for students who aren't able to come to school and, uh, and be in the building. But one of the bigger savings is, as we look at the data over the last couple of, of years of students who have benefited from this program, there are up to five, if not more, students who are currently on an out-of-district placement at approximately $50,000 each year who would have benefited from this program and because of the success of this program would have been able to go back into the classroom and stay with us. So five kids right now that I can, that I can think of, that's $250,000 that, that saves the district. In addition to it being just the right thing to support these students who are in crisis right now. And, and some of what happens, just to uh, follow along with Caleb, once a student is out, it is not always easy for a student to come back because they become invested in the program they're in, the family becomes invested in the program they're in, but it would hopefully keep our students currently here from having more out-of-district placements. So we believe it will provide savings down the road, not necessarily some of the students that Kayla mentioned coming back, because once they're out, it is difficult, especially in high school, for them to necessarily come back. They establish different friends, they have different social groups. Can I ask a follow-up? Yes. Is, for the Bright program, is 55000 enough to fund, as I understand, a full-time clinician and a full-time academic coordinator? So two, two people at less than 30 grand each. Yeah. So we don't need to, we, what we're looking for is to fund the adjustment council because we have personnel in-house that we could use to fund the academic support person if we get a little creative. So this is just for the clinician then? Mm -hmm. okay. And then the, the last item, the treasurer one, are you familiar with that? Oh, yeah, I'm fine with that one. Okay. Yeah, it was just those two. Make <laughs> <laughs> money. Okay, make money. Because if you <laughs> weren't, you <laughs> wouldn't be the treasurer. <laughs> yeah, if the treasurer gets created, they can only well, design new lines of uh, revenue generation and it could be cost savings. Yeah. Sorry. I think we have a motion on the table. Second. Second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? This was not an easy discussion. I thank all of you for participating to the passionate level that you have. <laughs> Anybody wants to stick around for Kathy's uh, presentation? Yeah. No. We still have the journey for the one of the young ladies. Hey, please. Did you do that? Thank you. 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 I, I, I apologize. May I ask a question? Go ahead. I just want to be sure. We had a shared cost position on the back page. I just wanted to be sure if I was clear. So at this point, you're not interested in us looking at that. Either. I thought we were going through the whole list now. That's what that's what Ed said he was going to do. No, that was on the last page. We didn't get to the last page. Oh, the flip side. Um, and I assume nobody wants to talk about the capital plan tonight. <laughs> no, it's not on the agenda, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Motion to adjourn. Was made. Yeah. Five yeah. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you again. All right. Thank you. 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 Thank